into a consistent flow, you begin to start seeing God move. It's hard to see God move if you're not in a consistent flow. How do water reach our house if it stops and doesn't have a consistent flow? What happens? You have air in the line, right? You ever um, turn on the water hose and you go, <laughs> then the water kicks out, then air kicks out, water kicks out, because there's, not, there's something in that connection that causes the air to get in. That's what happened. There's something in our connection that causes God to seem like as if he's moving stagnant in our life when God is at a consistent flow, but it's us. We're, we're, we're worshiping him when it's good, but when things get all, well, we worship him when things are chaotic, but when things are good, we, 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 we find ourselves in a stagnated stage. Okay, I'll pray tomorrow. I pray. No, that is the best time to get in God's presence when everything is going well, because now you're putting it in your spiritual tides. Have you ever heard of that one? Spiritual tides. What happened is you, as you, while everything is going good and you're praying before you pray, you begin to start thanking God in advance and begins to start breaking curses and issues and situations from happening in your life before it happens. So now I'm putting my spiritual tides in. I'm putting words in the atmosphere to connect because words are seeds. And as they begin to get into the mind, it begins to germinate. And as it begins to germinate, the more you ponder on it, it is like it begins to grow. And it grows, and it grows, and it grows. And as it begins to grow, then either you're going to wind up speaking it out, or you're going to be, you're going to cause yourself to be guided and directed towards that. See, because just because we speak things, just because, okay, I'm not going to say it. If I don't say it, then it's not going to happen. I'm not going to say it. If I don't say it, it's not going to happen. Have you said that's heard that before? No, because what happened is if I thought it and I don't bind it, something, not something, the demonic forces already in action is going to find some way to get you geared towards, like a magnetic, uh, going towards that, 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 that situation of what you said you're not going to do. But instead of saying, that, you know, I bind that thought up or I bind this, see, because, what is it, Jesus said that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Meaning, whatever I arrest, whatever I put into bondage, whatever I cause not to be effective, whatever I cause to be sterile, whatever I cause to be sterile in the natural, meaning can't give birth, can't be reproduced, can't bear fruit, can't have life, whatever I allow to not to have some form of life in my life, it can't exist. As I begin to meditate on the, on the laws, then I can be able to speak to these mountains. I can speak to these issues because I know how to speak to it because then I begin to say, look, devil, God said, or the law says this, and the law, this, 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 because people say the blood of Jesus, but they don't know what that means. People say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, but it's not really written in the Bible. People say all these cliche things, the blood of Jesus against you, but what are you saying when you say that? See, the blood of Jesus is our certificate. It's an agreement. That we hold up and say, look, I am a child of God. I have been redeemed. I gave my life back. I surrendered my life back to God. I repented for all my sins. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And as we begin to hold that up, they call it the blood-stained banner. And as I begin to hold this up, the devil has no other choice but to go the other way. But when you say, well, okay, what about Job? Well, Job didn't know what was going on, but Job... In this whole process of going through what he was going through, in this whole process of going through what he was going through, Job found himself murmuring and complaining a couple of times. And then he found himself around people who began to spew curses. Oh, maybe it's because of this. See, because when things happen in our life, what happened? People are quick to, to diagnose, give advice, saying why this is happening, or they begin to make the, induce the curse that's in, the, in, the, in, in that present situation while you're going through all hell and high water. You want to pull your hair out and you wonder what's going on. And what's happening is Job was surrounded around uneducated people. Well, you might say, well, they were study. They were, they were wise men. They were this, they were that. No, spiritually uneducated men. You got spiritually uneducated people who are in theology school, who are in, 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 in preachers, uh, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and so forth. But these guys were spiritually uneducated because they didn't give Job the right words for the situation. They didn't repeat to Job what God had said about the situation. What they did was they repeated what the flesh said about the situation. If you come to someone and say, well, the doctor diagnosed me with this. So you have to be careful when, when I say this or that. I don't say the disease because when, when, when a preacher speaks, he's open in the spirit. So I'm not going to say 
the exact names of different things because then I don't know if anyone has, that's why I'm training you all up so if anything, God forbid, ever happened to me, you know exactly what to say to the situation. Or even know what to say before I get emotionally involved in the situation. See, because no one is exempt from getting emotionally involved in their situations. I don't care how anointed they claim to be. It's hard to live a life without getting emotionally involved in anything. That's how we get conned. That's how we get robbed. That's how we get these different situations where it's like, well, the guy looked at nice. I mean, look at it. It's this and this. And, you know, the guy said this, the guy said that. But, yeah, he said it, but he didn't tell you that this was missing out of the car. He just told you it was refurbished. Meaning that it, this could be there, that can be there. It means that he, a lot of stuff could be missing, a lot of stuff could be added, and you can have a lot of pacifiers here and there. And so as we begin, as we begin to understand, we gotta understand these 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 words that come out of our mouth. So we have to be careful of the people that we let around us. See, because then we gotta be careful of the people we let inside our house. No matter how much we love them, we gotta be careful of the conversation that goes on in our house. Now, if we can't control or feel that we can't control the issue because we don't want to argue or we don't want to explode the situation, then we have to go to a different room and start praying. See, because if I get mad and you get mad, it is explosive. But if I go to the next room and say, okay, you know, to pray before I pray and then pray. And then as I begin to go back into the next room, then no matter what the atmosphere is, because you got to remember, you're dealing with two different people. So that, that, that's different because you pray doesn't mean that that person's going to listen to God. Even if God shift the atmosphere, but in the but but God, but God's gonna begin to shift the atmosphere regardless. But it might take longer than you think. See, because we want when we say when we hear these preachers speak or we read in the Bible, it seems like things like boom, and they happen like that. But we don't see it as boom. We see it as forever. Because one person is being hard headed and the other one is like uh, uh, like that. So it's emotionally involved. As we begin to understand the power of our words. And we begin to look at Job. And then Job's wife, what did she say? Curse God and die. And he said, well, you sound like a, a foolish woman. He went on and on. But then Job began to understand, pray before you pray. And as he began to understand, pray before you pray. As we go into the uh, last chapter of Job, he began to start praying for his friends. You know, those ones that said, if I was you, I would. And you know, you know that you know deep in your heart and your soul that if they were in that same situation, they might be hanging from a rope. If they were in that same situation, you might be visiting them at the hospital. So would it get that if I was you, I would, I don't know. But Job begins to start praying for these people that began to spew curses into his life saying that, you know, you should this, you should that, or this is why this I left. He began to pray for them, and as he began to pray for them, the Bible says that God gave him twice back everything he lost. His children died. His livestock died. Everything he had in his life. You ever heard that saying, all hell broke loose? No matter which way you turn to left or right, it's all hell. He was like living hell. I mean, he was like the capital H-E-L-L -L hell. And then he began to catch himself. And then he began to start praying for these people around him. See, because you've got to change the atmosphere. And when you change the atmosphere, you're changing the conversation. you got to keep changing the atmosphere. No matter how much what happens, you got to keep the, how do I change the atmosphere? You begin to change the conversation. Change the conversation. Change the conversation. As you begin to stir up the atmosphere, you begin to see God move. So what happened? The kids that Job had, that died, God gave him twice the many kids that he had in the beginning. The livestock, he gave him twice as many of the livestock that he had. Then we go back to looking at uh, uh, David. As we looked at David, David knew all the great things that God had done in his life. All the great things that God had done in his life, but and all the victory that happened, but when he came back from war, the whole camp was gone. The whole thing, the wife, the kids were gone, and everything was, was, was gone. What happened? The people were thinking about murdering David. Because, you see, people are good when God is doing good things in your life or good things in their life. They're they, they in that deep worship. Have you ever been to a church where people are so deep in worship that their eyes are flipping to the back of their head? Or they, they, I mean, why do we always have to wait that, that we have to wait for that certain music to, to play before we start running through the church. You know that one? Dun, 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 do, 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 with the drums. And they have to wait till that begun, and then that's when they start moving, and then when the music stops, they stop. Some people, as long as God's moving in their life, they see God. But if they don't see, but when hell's breaking loose in their life, it's hard for them to see God. So what happened was, David, he said, he came to us, and he realized, let's go over there real quick, as we come slowly to our close. 
And uh, we're going to go to uh, 